chat and see who's here. Vicky, hi, Emma, Sue, Louise, Shelley. Hey, Shelley. Um, Robin from New Zealand. Um, we've got Pacific Northwest. Yeah, we should. This time really is going to suit a lot of people up in the US of A and Canada, um, Australia, New Zealand, um, Southeast Asia, probably not so much uh, the people up in Europe and the UK. Is anyone here from Europe and the UK? If, it's, if you are, it's the middle of the night for you. I've got Mexico, Lorena, hi. Drago in Montreal. Sally says wrong way. Um, oh, okay, I think you're still talking about being able to hear me. So um, there might be a little bit of a delay in some of these things coming through. Linda from Sydney, Alison from Minnesota, Jana from Adelaide, Carolyn from Virginia. Hi. All right. Well, um, welcome along. Thank you so much for making it live. These days, a lot of people sign up for live webinars and only a few make it. So you are among the few if you have made it this morning. I know other people do have commitments. Um, and they'll be watching the recording, but hopefully those of you who are here are going to gain the most benefit because you're going to get to work with this directly. And I am um, going to call for some volunteers along the way uh, as well. Uh, what I want to do today is to show you the basics of what I'm calling uh, intention-based energy process. Now, if you've seen me talk about this before, you may have seen me call this intention-based energy technique. Um, I changed the name just so it would be IEP instead of IET because there were some other things that it clashed with me, namely my friends Emma Roberts and Sue Beer do a fantastic process um, integrative energy uh, uh, techniques training that they do IET. So I'm calling this IEP. Let's quickly skip through the essential fundamentals and the housekeeping stuff so that we can get into this. And my aim is to give you as much as I can in the time that we have about how to use this. I don't want to hold back in any way, um, but I do want to take you with me. The process is really simple and it's really powerful and it's continually astounding me what it can do. And um, anyway, let's let's get through the disclaimers and so on. Let's get into that and I'll give you as much as I can. And uh, we will be calling for some volunteers here now. I do. I did actually have a couple of people write to me about being volunteers and my other computer as, you know, these challenges with technology. So I haven't been able to access that other computer because it's crashing this morning for some reason. So if you have are my volunteer, can you write that in the chat if you are here and just remind me, please, and I'll see your name um, oh, while I put my glasses on and see some more names there. I'm seeing... Uh, Sandra, Nancy, Patricia, Kerry, Christopher, excellent. Good to see you again. Um, anyway, so this program is general informational and educational purposes only and is not medical advice. Um, whilst uh, SET, Simple Energy Techniques, and uh, my new intention-based energy process have caused impressive results for a lot of people, there's no guarantee that it's going to achieve your goals or they're going to achieve your goals or be as painless as they are for, for others. So therefore, these techniques still have to be considered experimental. And therefore, if you are going to use them, you have to agree to take full responsibility for use of the te techniques, your own physical, mental, and emotional health, and consult your physician or therapist regarding your use of them, particularly if you're dealing with uh, strong physical uh, and emotional issues. A couple of house creeping and house creeping is <laughs> a good one. I'm trying to rush because I know how short an hour is. Um, this call is being recorded by participating. You give permission to being recorded. It will be passed on to other people. Obviously, there's a lot of people who've signed up and there are people who couldn't make it uh, and so on. I had people write to me saying they were sick and so on. So it'll be great for them to be able to get the recording. I Not, not just may, I will take live questions via the chat or the microphone. So if you've already seen the chat down there, it should be in the left-hand corner of your screen. And you can type into that of crashing. Is everybody else okay? Are you receiving me clearly? Unfortunately, the vagaries of technology means that sometimes some people are not going to have the the clear immediacy and so on. So it's good to see. Yeah, okay. So it's coming through good for everyone else or most of the people. Thank you. Now I do. Um, I will be looking to my volunteer, who I haven't seen type in there and remind me of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Ah, oh, Jana, you did volunteer. 
I oh, did not volunteer, excuse me. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm going to ask some people to speak with me. I want to take the people who've written and give them first option. Um, if that's you, you must have a headset or headphones, otherwise there'll be a nasty echo. You cannot um, do the speaking on the, uh, you know, the, the, the coaching part without having a headset or headphones, otherwise there will be a nasty echo, unfortunately. All right, so um, most of you know that I've been doing tapping for some time. Sorry, I have to keep putting my glasses on and taking them off just so I can read some of these small types. Um, I've been using tapping for since late 1997 and like most people who know tapping which would be a lot of people who are on this call I was absolutely blown away by the results that I started getting with people in terms of helping them to get relief on all kinds of emotional and some physical issues as well and the process that we use we call SET uh, simple energy techniques and what we essentially do and when I say we I mean myself and my colleague Dr. David Lake we put this together we learnt EFT emotional freedom techniques originally from Gary Craig and then we progressively developed our own approach and uh, and uh, ultimately we made enough changes that I made an agreement with Gary Craig to call what we do something different even though a lot of people do tapping the way we do it and they call it EFT we uh, agreed to call it simple energy techniques and to differentiate what we do from Gary Craig's EFT. So we do a lot of just tapping on the points and then focusing on the problem in your own way. So I'm, you know, I'm tapping on some of those acupressure points as I go and instantly I notice in myself that I feel less need to rush. Um, which obviously I started off in a bit of a rush, you know, there's always the chaos at the last minute in here getting everything ready for a webinar like this. Um, and so the tapping has an instant relaxing effect on the body and it can do a lot more for you. Now, if you know tapping or even if you don't, I'm going to suggest that you just use two fingers of your dominant hand to tap on these points as we go. Now, I combine this technique that I'm calling intention-based energy process or this process if you like with the tapping but I've also used it with people very effectively without using tapping I think the combination is a really good one-two process um, and the tapping is doing something in the body as well to facilitate the release of blockages and the flow of your good life energy and whilst it uh, also can change your brain chemistry and help you to calm down, it can also help you to feel good and feel better. And so this is just a process of tapping and uh, on these particular points. And if you tap along the whole time when we're doing this webinar, then you're going to get a benefit from doing that. So a quick review of the basics of, of SET. And then I'm going to suggest that you use that uh, simple tapping and do that simple tapping the whole time while I'm explaining this other process that I've discovered and you'll get the benefits of both techniques. Um, we also, uh, just trying to get this right, tap on the fingers of the same hand using the thumb of the same hand. Um, you can tap while focusing on a problem or you can tap while not focusing on a problem. You can tap in any order on this side of the body or that side of the body on this side or that side. Um, and you can focus on whatever you're aware of, your thoughts, your feelings, your body sensations. Just notice, accept, allow and follow what happens with this process rather than trying to make something happen. Um, as I said, you can tap directly where you focus on problems or you can tap indirectly where you're just tapping. And what we find is the more tapping you do on these points, the better your result are likely to be. And we recommend tapping daily for what we call energy toning where your stress levels progressively come down and your good life energy comes up and when this shift happens then you generally feel more optimistic the negative thoughts that used to possess you just flow straight through you don't salute them emotionally you don't react to them and so on um, and the tapping can do what the process which i'm going to outline to you today can do what I find though is that this process can do that much more quickly. Now I'm not 100% sure of how um, you know all the stuff that's going on internally. There's plenty of other people who are investigating that stuff 
more than me. And people ask me, how does this work and, and so on. And really the truth is that nobody really knows. You know, we know some of the effects. We know that when we do tapping that it, you know, it changes the brain chemistry and it changes the brain waves. And then there's all kinds of theories about what else is happening with energy and so on. Now with my intention process, um, the same questions get asked, you know, what's, how's this working for goodness sake? This is ridiculous. It shouldn't be working like this. Well, it, it just does. And uh, I believe that you can use intention to give an instruction to your unconscious or subconscious mind, which it will carry out for you. And uh, you know, there's plenty of other people who believe this. You know, I learned that concept originally from Dr. Larry Nims, who created Be Set Free Fast, which is a fantastic uh, technique, which um, gives instructions to the subconscious mind and creates a cue word to initiate the healing. So let me skip through. Some of you have been with me before. You'll know the story about how I discovered this. What I want to do is, um, ha ha. Anna says I need to tap on eyesight. I didn't see that, Anna, until I put my glasses on. So, yeah, thanks very much. Um, tapping actually can help eyesight, and uh, it certainly can improve eyesight, and I have used it to improve mine. Um, there's also a thing called gravity that uh, all of our bodies are, uh, are suspect to or subject to over time. And uh, you know what? Sometimes tapping can also help us to go with and to love what is. So here's what happened. I, I essentially discovered this process around Christmas and um, I was stuck in my chair with a nasty heel spur, a bone spur, and uh, I couldn't really walk that much. Now, I wanted to take a few days off anyway, so I did, but I was a bit frustrated about this because I couldn't move and I had this pain. And uh, I wasn't so much doing the tapping on the pain of the, the heel spur, I was actually doing it on problems and frustrations with myself and with my business and what I had done and hadn't done and how I hadn't moved forward and how I should be moving forward and all that stuff, you know, that we we do where we get into ourselves. And those of you who've followed me over the years, you know I do a lot of stuff on self-acceptance. That's because I have a lot of issues with self-acceptance or lack of self-acceptance that tend to get triggered sometimes. And when we get sick or when we get injured, this is another time when we become vulnerable to this kind of stuff. So I was treating all those problems and frustrations using the, the um, SET tapping that I just mentioned. I was using a process called trauma release or tension and trauma release exercises created by Dr. David Bashelli, which is a, a, um, a much larger energy process of initiating a natural shaking process in the body that shakes tension out of the um, the, the muscles and cells that's, that's strongly held in the body from past trauma and from, uh, from stuff that happens to us through life. I was using logosynthesis, which is an intention-based approach created by uh, Willem Lammers from up in Switzerland. It's a fantastic approach where you can use your own intention to retrieve the energy that you have bound up in problems and to release energy which is not yours. It's fantastic. Uh, uh, technique and has three main sentences um, uh, which whereby you, you focus your intention on uh, those problems and resolve them. I was using a process created by a guy named Robert Middleton who's a marketing guy who I've done some coaching with. He calls it the unstuck process and that was based on Byron Katie's The Work. Now I've read a lot of Byron Katie's stuff. I really love what she does. Uh, she has a process which she discovered herself for essentially going inside and questioning the truth of something that is is upsetting you. And if you're upset, she says the only way you can be upset is because you're attaching to a belief or a thought that differs from reality. So, you know, I did Robert's version of this process and I also got back into looking at um, at Byron Katie's stuff and her seminal work is in a book called Loving What Is. And uh, you know it occurred to me during this process that I was doing a lot of stuff on, on problems and tapping and focusing on problems and I needed to once again focus on what my goals are and what my intentions are, were you know were in my life and what I wanted to create. Now anybody who who knows me knows that you know I say one of the greatest ways to discover your blocks is to set a goal to change because the minute you set a goal to change up comes your blocks 
And uh, what is it that, that comes up? Well, what, what comes up really is an attachment. And uh, during this process, I was reading Katie's book, Loving What Is, you know, for about the 10th time. Um, sorry, <laughs> my glasses keep fogging up here. I don't know what this is, but uh, obviously I've come in here and I turn on the... Um, turn on the air conditioner and it's a little bit too hot in this room or something and my glasses are fogging up and I'm a little bit too, you know, overexcited or something. Um, so I have to keep taking them off and putting them on. Anyway, um, Iron Katie has this statement in her book and it really just jumped out at me. She says, a thought is harmless unless we believe it. It's not our thoughts, but the attachment to our thoughts that causes suffering. And it occurred to me, yeah, it's actually the emotional attachment of the thought that causes us to suffer. I like to think of them as thought feelings. So in the past, you know, I did cognitive therapy where we focus on changing the thought. Now I've realized that, you know, the thought uh, is only an issue if it causes a reaction in the body, if it triggers a reaction. And uh, so ultimately, we are saluting a thought emotionally. We, we are, it's like we're attached to it. And uh, you know, we know that when we imagine something vividly, our brain and our nervous system can't tell the difference between something we vividly imagine and something we actually experience. The same thing when we recall something bad that happens to us. And if we've had a trauma or a negative, real negative experience, then we can be remembering that as if it's happening now and create that experience in our body again as if it's happening now. And the reason why is because we have created an attachment to that experience or to something that we decided about that experience. And so Byron Katie's process is about questioning, is that true, and going down deep inside and realising that we're attaching to something that isn't true. And really, if we just deal with what is, then life is much more friendly. So it occurred to me, it's, it's not the thought that's a problem, it's the emotional attachment to the, to the thought. Tapping works because it releases that emotional attachment. And the work by Byron Katie also releases attachment through a different process, through her inquiry-based process, through asking, is it true? And once you realize that it's not true, it's like, you know, she says, when you see um, something on the ground and you think it's a snake and you react to it, and then you realize it's only a rope, then once you realize the truth, you can't go back to thinking that it's a snake because you know that it's a rope. And so you no longer have that reaction that you were attached to just a moment ago. So it occurred to me, what if we could just use intention to release that emotional attachment? Now, I, I'm aware of a number of approaches that use intention, like I mentioned, Be Set Free Fast and um, Larry, uh, uh, Larry uh, that's Larry Nims's approach and um, Willem Lammers' logosynthesis and so on. But it occurred to me that those are not the only ways that you can use intention. What if you could simply find anything that you are having an emotional reaction to and you could simply intend for you to release your emotional attachment to that? And so it turns out you can. And it's this simple. I was, I was you know, kind of sitting there in my lounge or wherever I was, you know, I varied from the lounge to my bedroom to a chair and um, I would say I release all of my emotional attachments to this, whatever it is that was upsetting me. And the first, term, first time I thought that, I kind of went, ah, and just relaxed. And uh, then I thought, well, that's really interesting. Let's try it again on another problem or another part of that problem. So I said, okay, I'll release all my emotional attachments to this. And I went, ah. And I thought, well, that's the same kind of shift that I get with doing tapping. Um, by the way, Sally, I don't need contact lenses because I would only need those if I needed to see everywhere. This is just for short, for reading stuff. Um, so I did that and I found that there was a shift. And then I thought, well, okay, let's try it on the next bit. And I tried on the next part of the problem and I found that I had a shift again. And I moved through the aspects of that problem really quickly and it was resolved. And then I thought, well, this is really interesting, but, you know, this can't really be. And for the last, you know, literally 10 months of using this simple statement on all kinds of problems and with all kinds of people um, and a few other things that I've learned about how to apply it and make it work, 
I have to say I'm continually astounded that you can simply form the intention to release your emotional attachment to something and you do. And uh, now, if you say I release all my emotional attachments to my mother, then you have a global thing and you have a lot of different emotional attachments to your mother. Will you instantly release all of your emotional attachments to your mother? No, but, but you're not actually being triggered at the moment by your mother. You're being triggered by a memory of something she said to you, um, a way she looked at you, something that she did, um, some message that you took from her that was painful when you received it. And that's what's triggering your re reaction in the moment right now. And when you start on that and you work through and you apply this to all of those different things, surprise, surprise, you can get to those aspects and you can release them and you can release them quite quickly. And of course, you can combine this with tapping. And if you're finding that one is working better, you can do more of that. I just find that the, the combination works really well. Now, the other thing that occurred to me was that when, you, when you're attached to something, you have an energy disturbance in your body or it feels like a disturbance in your in the force so um you know you might have a feeling in your stomach or you might have a feeling in your chest or you might have a lump in your throat or you might have a feeling in your head whatever it is and so that's what's actually going on there is that you've got a disturbance in energy flow so when we do tapping, what we're doing is we're restoring the flow. We're restoring the flow of body energy. I believe that's what's happening anyway. And um, certainly is what seems to happen and certainly what people report feeling. And so I thought, well, can you use your intention to restore the energy flow to an area where the energy is blocked or disturbed or, or whatever? And so I um, formed an intention statement like this. I restore the right energy flow to whatever and so for example you know I've had a tightness in my chest I would say I restore the right energy flow to my chest and then I would just let that percolate through and go ah. you know like I'm doing right now just from saying that so I wasn't aware before that until that moment that there was this kind of real you know a little bit of tightness in my chest I formed the intention to restore the energy flow to that area and lo and behold, it works. And so what I've come up with is this is the simple two-step path. This is, if you like, this is the problem-solving part of this process. I release all my emotional attachments to this problem, event, image, belief, thought, whatever it is that you are emotionally reacting to or attached to. And I restore the right energy flow to this body area, whatever the body area is that is disturbed. And what I find is that you need to use the first statement a lot more than the second statement and often the second statement won't work for people unless you've done enough releasing to be able to get access to influence the energy body flow um, that's going on. So that's essentially the... the um, now, are you using setup phrase or reminder phrase or just thinking your intention while you're tapping? Just thinking your intention while you're tapping. And um, the other thing is when we do tapping the way we do it, we don't use setup statements. So this is Alison's question. Um, no, we don't use setup statements or reminder phrases. We just focus on whatever you're aware of that constitutes the problem because we find that words are inadequate for describing some things. And sometimes you have an image that's upsetting. You can simply focus on an image and you can tap. Now, if you have that now, like I used this with a guy who had just come back from New Zealand. He uh, just before I went to New Zealand, this guy had just come back from New Zealand. He'd been skiing and he got, um, he was in an avalanche and uh, unfortunately um, someone had died and he had been involved in trying to dig this person out and this person's face was like right there in his memory. And so I taught him the tapping and I also said, okay, all we're going to do is we're going to uh, make this statement, I release all my emotional attachments to this face. And after saying that, and of course he was doing the tapping at the same time, that image of the face went from being right here to being over there, to being further away, and emotionally he just instantly started to relax. Now that process happens with tapping on its own, but for a lot of people, the shifts 
benefits of, of that are not, you know, certainly not in my experience after doing tapping for over 18 years, um, this allows you to work through those aspects of the problem really, really quickly and release things really, really quickly. So it's essentially forming an intention which goes to the subconscious mind to release emotional attachments to whatever it is. And the key of it is really the targeting. Now, there's a lot of other distinctions for this as we go along, and I want to give you them as much as possible. What I want to do is I'll, I'll just give you an example of how I use this. I've got a couple of examples. In fact, I wanted to come up with one that was recent, so I did one yesterday. Um, and uh, let me go through this. So here's yesterday, and um, I did. I got upset over someone's post on Facebook. And I had a massive reaction. In fact, I was astounded myself at the strength of the reaction I had to this person's post. And it just seemed that this person was being really dogmatic and, and so on and very dismissive. And so I started with, I released all my emotional attachments to this post. And then the thought comes up in my mind, she's an idiot, okay? So now I simply say, I release all my emotional attachments to she's an idiot. Now you could say I release all my emotional attachments to the belief that she's an idiot or I release all my emotional attachments to the thought that she's an idiot. But I just like to put the thought in however you think it and just release your attachments to it. And then the thought came up to me, oh, she's just naive. You know, some people are not going to get this. And uh, the feeling was much less intense already. I would say, you know, probably 30, 40% less already. And then I had the thought, she's still wrong. <laughs> so I released my emotion attachments to she is wrong. So simply thinking and focusing on the thought, I release all my emotional attachments to she's wrong. And when you do this, you, 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 you do the process and then you notice what happens. Let it work. You know, I learned this from Willem Lammers in his, his process, which involves you know, sentences about releasing energy that's not yours and retrieving energy that's yours and so on. He waits a lot longer than I'm normally willing to wait for the reaction. Okay, so then I had the thought, you know, she's allowed to be wrong. Nobody's going to die from it. You know, I was already starting to internally, my thoughts are starting to become less intense and less dogmatic themselves. And so then I noticed, you know, where the disturbance was and it was, was in my diaphragm. And so I applied the other statement. I said, I restore the right energy flow to my diaphragm. And I noticed, what I notice right now, when I do that, when I focus on that area and restore the energy flow to that area, that the breathing started to go lower down. And then I noticed that my jaw was a bit tight and my tooth were a bit kind of like this. And so I said, I restore the right energy flow to my jaw. And my jaw loosened up, my teeth were no longer grinding, you know, they were apart. And then I kind of scanned through my body. I noticed I had about 20% of the feeling that was left. And then I'm like, okay, what's left? And I kind of, what's remaining here? And the thought actually came up, anger. So I said, I release all my emotional attachments to being angry. And then instantly I felt more relaxed and a lot less heat from that thought. And then I went back and looked at this person's post. And, you know, the thought I had was that I re reacted to the way that she insisted she was so right. And, uh, you know, and yet she was saying something which is clearly wrong and naive. And so I did the releasing statements on those thoughts as well. I release all my emotional attachments to I'm right and she is wrong. I release all my emotional attachments to she is naive and simple-minded. And then I had the, the thought, yeah, she is wrong and that's okay. She's right from her own experience. She's okay to use what works for her and my advice is for me. It's like, you know, people are allowed to be wrong, but that's only from your perspective, you know, they're, they're right from their own experience and that's what they're talking about. And what I should really be focusing on is applying my own advice to me was where I was left. I was feeling really calm. This took about probably five minutes. And then I thought, okay, what do I, what do I need to do next? And I thought, mm, time to get back to work. Turns out I was avoiding doing some work and some stuff in my work that I needed to do to put my stuff out there into the world. So really what was really provoking me behind all this 
was some avoidance of that. And so, um, you know, once I saw that, I was able to instantly move forward into that. So this is kind of a, a brief description of the process. And I want to give you another quick example of this. And then I'm then I'm going to see if, you know, we can work with someone. Because this is this is one I did earlier. And, you know, I've, I, um, oops, that was the one I just showed you. This is just another time I did it um, on myself, just as another example of myself. And this was... Uh, one that I used in another webinar because I was I was um, I was trying to outline my work and uh, and I wasn't able to do it. I was frustrated and the thought came up: it's a mess. And so here's how you apply it. I really saw my emotional attachments to it's a mess. Instantly felt more peaceful, but I noticed I had some tension in the back of my head. So I said I restore the right energy flow to the back of my head, and then I noticed that I had tension in my neck. So I said, I restore the right energy flow to my neck. And then the thought came up, I need to reduce it down to its parts. So again, your mind starts problem solving. But then I had the thought, I'm not good at organising. So another negative belief comes in. And so I release all my emotional attachments to not being good at organising. Or you could say, I release all my emotional attachments to I'm not good at organising. Then I sighed, had a deep breath, felt my chest opening up. And the thought, I just need to do it. I haven't practiced this and I've had resistance to it in the past. So for goodness sake, you know, I haven't been good at organising really because I haven't done a lot of it. And so I felt a lot more freedom. I was able to embrace the idea of organising stuff. Uh, and then up came all these memories of where I had successfully done some organising in the past. Now, again, before finishing, you know, scan through your body and mind. Notice if there's something left. Um, and I had this doubt, you know, about putting stuff out there. You know, they're going to think that what I did is a really pathetic effort. And so I release all my emotional attachments to this fantasy of them rejecting my pathetic attempts at organising. See, you can apply the, the process to a thought that's happening currently, a past event, and also a future projection, because we can stir ourselves up by imagining that we're going to fail, which people do all the time. You know, and I like to work with people on getting over their blocks to putting their stuff out into the world. And a lot of them are creating scenarios in the mind of themselves failing, and then they're suffering that as if it's happening right now. So I get them to release the emotional attachments to the fantasy that they've created of failing, which is what I had this day. And, you know, as soon as I released that and I'm doing it now, I started to smile and I thought it's all okay. Some will like it, some won't. That's just their stuff. Um, success, not perfection, which is, you know, a little thing that I have. I have this little thing sitting on my computer that says success, not perfection. In fact, I leave it there stuck on a sticky note that doesn't even stick anymore because um, that's a little imperfect thing reminding me that it's, you know, you don't have to be perfect. Just get some stuff out there and do it. And again, the message to me, which seems to be one that I need to hear a lot more, is to live my own philosophy rather than, um, you know, and, and focus on what's right for me. And then other people are going to do what's right for them and so on. So this is essentially the, the basic process. Now, I also have a four-step way of using this to achieve goals and intentions, um, which some of you, if you've done those programs in the past, have, um, have seen. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm going to be putting them into more programs coming up. But let's just very quickly get some questions now. Um, let's get some. I'm going to change this over to question and answer mode, which means that not only can you type questions in the chat, and I'll try and respond to them, but my volunteers, and if you are one of the people who wrote to me, you are first. Um, I need to have another look at this chat. But here's how you ask a question in this webinar program. Um, if you want to talk with me live, you need to raise your hand via the drop-down box. The drop-down box is uh, located where there's a little smiley face on the corner of the attendees list. Now, you don't see all your names on the attendees list because I'm keeping them uh, anonymous for you. Um, but at the bottom of that box, there's this little smiley face thing here, and you click on that and then up will come options, one of which is to raise your hand. And if you raise your hand and I see it, then what I'll do is I will click to give you voice, and then um, there'll be a little bit of 
hanging around while something comes on your computer and says, you know, do you give permission and you have click yes and then eventually we'll be able to talk to each other. Um, so no, sorry, you can't see names of attendees because I'm keeping them. But you can see all the names of people in the chat at the moment and those that are uh, willing and wanting to be um, open and transparent and seen and so on. Um, yeah, first names, but some people have put their initial, their, you know, other names and so on. So, like, for example, Michael Foster. Hi, Michael. <laughs> so, so um, let's get some questions out. Um, let's get some, oh, when did you, did you then use the technique to look at avoiding your work? Yes, actually I did, and I was able to move forward and do that. Um, and I, I, I actually decided, strangely enough, I decided not to go through the process of, um, of explaining what I did there for you, because I, I thought, well, that's really more about me, um, you know, about me selling something rather than being helpful to you. So I thought I'd stop explaining the process there. Um, so I have Sylvia here, and I'm going to give voice to you, Sylvia. And what will happen, by the way, when you put your hand up? And the other one is Josie. Um, Josie or, or Sylvia, are you, either of you people that previously wrote to me and volunteered? I have to apologise to those people that did write to me. I just, um, they're on the other computer. So, Sylvia, you should be able to come through now. Yes, I did not write to you, but I do have a question. Okay, um, let's hear it. Can you address a physical pain if you don't know what the emotion is behind it? So, instead, like, like you say, you, you release the emotional attachments, but you still have a pain, or you have that pain, but you don't know what's causing it. Okay. Well, first of all, the same thing with tapping, um, and you can certainly use this process for that because all physical pains have emotional associated with them, and the, the emotion may also be associated with the cause. However, I would never do that unless I knew what I was working with, had a diagnosis, and made sure that I had that checked out, especially undiagnosed um, head and chest pain. So, assuming that you have a diagnosis and you you know what you're dealing with, um, which I hope you do. What's the problem? What's the pain? Uh, well, there there is no physical cause for it, but it would it's neck pain and shoulder pain, lower back pain. Um, okay. No memories, no emotions associated with it, or anything like that. Just when you. When I put the focus on any of those areas, the pain intensifies, but wow. I've never been able to let it go. I, I don't okay. know what's behind it. All right. Well, a large part of pain is actually our emotional reaction to pain. Um, for example, you know, in, in your culture and ours, when, when people go and, you know, when kids go and have their tonsils out, then they, they you know, tend to stay in bed for a while and, you know, have trouble talking, whereas in China when they have that operation they go off and play and because uh, they don't perceive the pain the same way that we do in our culture. And um, so if we release some of the emotional attachments that you have to the pain, maybe that will free up some energy for healing. I'm not sure. Um, just excuse me for a second. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've just been talking a lot, so I need to have a little, uh, little bit of my honey and lemon here. Okay, so let's see. Let's just do something with it now and see what happens. So it's interesting that if you put your focus on it, the pain intensifies. Um, and uh, when you focus on the, the the pain, what's the thought that comes up? I wish to hell I could get rid of this. I okay. am so done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, as strange as it seems, that that is that's like you have your problem, and then you have your reaction to the problem, and that reaction to the problem can hold the problem down or keep it there. So, using this technique, we would just simply apply it to that. So, just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To I'm so done with this pain. To I'm so done with this pain.
So Byron Cody would say that, um, you know, there's there's the the pain, and so you know, then you have your reaction to the pain, and so the reaction to the pain is kind of denying it, pushing it away, trying to um, make it not real, but it is real. So the first thing is kind of saying yes to something that you want to say no to, and paradoxically, accepting it allows you to engage with it and do something with it. Not accepting it keeps you away from being able to do anything with it. So. Um, just notice what comes up next from that. What's what? What are you noticing? What are you feeling? What are you thinking? Um, shoulders are raised up, and and uh, very tense. Sort of yep. like when someone goes to hit you, and your shoulders go straight up. Okay. So if you have a thought like you know a reaction to being hit, you can also say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments to this being hit thought. Being hit thought. And sometimes you don't even know what it really is, but if you have that come up in your mind, you can you can use it. And just notice what happens and notice what, you know, what comes up in your thinking and feeling, assuming you're also tapping at the same time. Um, yes, I am tapping. Okay. Back can I also, um, like someone's again. saying that they can't hear what you're saying. Can other people hear what Sylvia is saying? Um, maybe if you can um, speak more. Yeah, other people are saying yes, so that may be just Tessa's reception, so other people can hear you. That's fine. Anyway, if you just try and speak up for us, that would be good too. Um, so what's happening with the feeling or the thoughts? Back to the lower back. Um, tightening. Mm, okay, so um, what's interesting about this is it's moving. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay, so when things are moving and flowing, I'm always interested. It's when they're stuck that there's a problem. Um, but let's just try this. Just say, I restore the right energy flow to my lower back. I restore the right energy flow to my lower back. And just let that land for a while and see what comes up, thoughts or feelings. Um, there's a, a relief mm -hmm. and, and a doubt that this is going to stick. Okay. So now we, we say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To this is not going to stick. So this is not going to stick. And then just let that land and see what comes up next. Um, you're familiar with TRE, you said, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it, it just went through almost like an all-over body shake and um, I think feel like I want to cry, but I don't know why. And mm -hmm. the feeling is sort of there, but not. Okay. So that's interesting. So that, that emotion may be something behind this. And you know what? Sometimes we can even have an emotional reaction to an emotion, as in we're not meant to have that emotion or that emotion's stupid or we shouldn't be feeling it or thinking it or whatever. So just say, I release, I, I release all my emotional attachments to this I sadness. Release all, I release all my emotional attachments to this sadness. I'm hearing you tap, so I know you are. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's some kind of a thought that if I if I abandon if I abandon the sadness, I will abandon my mother. Okay. So again, you, whatever comes up, you just simply follow that, and you say, "I release all my emotional attachments." I release all my emotional attachments. To if I abandon the sadness, I'll be abandoning my mother. To if I abandon this sadness, I will be abandoning my mother. Mm. And again, just let that land. 
and notice what comes next. Um, yeah. Now we're in the solar plexus. Uh -huh. Okay, and what's there? Fear. Absolute fear. Okay. Let's try this though. Just say I restore the right energy flow to my solar plexus. I restore the right energy floor. I restore flow. <laughs> the right energy flow to my solar plexus. And just notice what that does. Big deep breath in. Hmm. Yeah, because when we have a reaction like fear, you know, our breathing stops and we, you know, have tightness and hold ourselves uh -huh. and so on. Um, okay, so what's happening with that now? I, I'm sort of having that minty, fresh feeling like you do after you brush your teeth. <laughs> but it's in my solar plexus. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, what's just put your just just scan through your body and just notice what's coming up right now. In my left ear, there's a a pitch, a high high frequency pitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just um, you can just say I release all my emotional attachments to this high frequency pitch or to this sound or whatever it is that you that you think I release all my attachments to this high frequency pitch and now it now it feels like I'm sort of half in and half out so it's like part of me is committed and another part is going, no. Oh, well, this is the human condition, you know. I want to make a difference in the world, but I want to go to the beach, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, the picture Winston that flashed... Churchill called it internal civil war, you know. Exactly. The, the picture that flashed into my mind was a person who was on like sort of a, a, a crevice and had one yeah. leg on one side and one on the other. Okay. All right. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To what is it? Standing on the fence or being on half and half or whatever. Put it in words yourself. To being diplomatic and trying to handle both sides at the same time. Is that a pattern of yours? Yes. Okay. So this yes, is a, this it, I, 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 I sorry, just John. had a uh, I just had a quick memory of being a young kid and being told that I was very diplomatic because I could always see both sides of it. Beautiful. Which meant I had okay. to sympathize. Yeah. Yes. Which which Funnily enough, was a positive memory, but it led to a negative consequence because it means that you have to suppress the other side to yourself and so on. And, yes. um, and your legitimate reactions and feelings at, at times to that. So um, as you see, we now we've got a memory and now you can simply go to that memory and you can release your emotional attachments to that memory. Um, so just do that. Just say, I release all my emotional attachments to this diplomatic memory. I release all my emotional attachments to this diplomatic memory. And just notice what comes up. It feels safer to make a choice or to stand on a side or to speak my mind. Yeah. All right. So there's more to do here, but you can you can do this and just just with what I've um, shown you, you can use this and you know enough to be dangerous, so to speak. Um, so I, I highly recommend uh, to people when I first show them this, 
just use it like I call it. You know that blunderbuss thing where it just shoots out pallets everywhere, um, like buckshot? buckshot um, just use yep. it like a blunderbuss where you apply it, you know, um, what's the word, to everything that you notice that you are having an attachment to. And pretty pretty soon what happens is the same thing with Byron Katie's inquiry process is that, you know, in, instead of instantly saluting these thoughts and reacting to them, we start actually releasing them sometimes before they've even taken hold or as they start to take hold over us. And um, we, you know, we're, we're able to see just how much uh, these are really just thoughts and, and how they came from situations like that that were emotionally strong. And so they got hardwired into our nervous system as, as uh, you know, truths and beliefs and so on and all, all beliefs are are really strongly emotionally attached thoughts um, and so um, you know when we release our emotional attachments to them then we are no longer controlled by them in the same way so I'm just going to put a pause in here um, Sylvia if that's okay um, yes, how's please. your how's your body feeling at the moment effervescent that's the first hmm. word that popped into my mind is, yeah, effervescent. All like right. Tingly well, so far, so and... good. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So I have another one here, Josie. So I've just clicked to give you voice, Josie. Hopefully you will see the thing that will come through. Um, let me just put this up just in case. Um, Something should come through that says to you, you know, you've chosen to ask a question. Do you want to ask a question now? And then you have this thing that will come up saying about allowing your camera and microphone access. And so hopefully you'll see those things come up on your computer and you will be able to ask me a question. So um, people are asking things like, can this process be used surrogately? Well, same thing with surrogate tapping, where people do tapping for other people um, or where people pray for the good of other people. I personally like to do things directly. I'm a direct kind of guy. So I like people to know um, if I'm doing something to help them. And I also know that if I want for someone else to get better, I need to first release my emotional attachments to their problem so that I'm in a clear space and um, and sometimes I'm the one who's needy because I want the, the world, I, I need the world to change. Whereas uh, as Byron Cody would say, when I do that, I'm putting myself into what she calls God's business, which is, or the other person's business, which is how they live their life. And also it may be God's business, you know, and she says God is is to her is what's happening in the world or spirit or the universe or whatever you want to call this um, that's how do I know what's the best for that person I don't necessarily know that um, but yeah you could use it but I suggest using it on yourself first for your need for them to get better um, uh, Jan is saying, can this process be used with children? Yes, I find that um, uh, kids can uh, can understand this. Obviously, there will be a limit in terms of, you know, um, two-year-olds might have trouble understanding the concept of emotional attachments and so on. So you're typically going to use this with, with kids who are a bit older. And the other thing I found is that kids don't tend to uh, attach to as much stuff. Um, so even with, you know, with tapping, you know, simply tapping with them, they don't need to, to um, you know, you can just do the tapping on one little thing that's upsetting them and blam, that releases. So you could you, know, you could simply say, you know, are you worried about robbers? And you and they say yes, and you could say, you know, and you know, do it with tapping, you know, I release my attachment to robbers or this, you know, this, um, uh, you know, video in my mind of robbers coming in the room or whatever it is using their language, obviously. Um, so Sylvia is saying yes, feels much lighter, um, voice was lighter, Emma was saying yes and um, when I focus on the back now it doesn't seize as strongly either. Yeah, there's more to do here and I'd just be curious if you give that a go for, uh, for a week or two and maybe you could write to me Sylvia and I'll put that out and let people know that would be nice to get that feedback. Now Josie, you haven't come through yet so let me just go back and try to give you voice again. And hopefully you're going to see this thing come up on your computer. So you can either click on this thing to ask a question or you should get this thing come up something like 
this thing here, a dialog box now will come up and you have to click to ask a question and then you have to then, this thing will come up to allow um, microphone access. Here you are. All right. This is good. Now we only have a couple of minutes, so I hope it's just a quick question. Um, are you there? All right, so I'm still, it says waiting for user response. So, um, hey, we have a couple of minutes, you know, let's see what we can do. Um, this isn't going to release all of your um, aspects of a problem, but it can release an attachment to an aspect of a problem quite quickly. Um, if, for example, a belief has, has model supports to that belief, then you may need to release each of those um, emotion which in themselves are each of them are emotional attachments which may have come from specific events where you had attached or whatever um, and so you may need to go through and apply it to each of the things that you took from those events sometimes when going through a past event you may have different parts of that that um, create an intense reaction for you and so each of those parts may have something that you need to release so Josie you're there Now it says you are Josie, but I can't hear you. So I don't know what's happening. Have you got your microphone on? Is it working? Um, what's the story? Because according to this, you should be able to come through. Um, Loretta says she appeared for a second, then disappeared. Ah, you're audio attendee, Josie. Yeah. Looks like your internet is going in and out. So we can just say I release all my emotional attachments to technology not working or whatever. Um, that doesn't necessarily make the technology work, but it, it deals with our reaction to it. Oh, Josie, you're coming through on video. Hello. <laughs> so we have two people here now. We don't have any sound. So we can see you, but we have no sound. So you need to turn on your... Um, your sound on the left hand side there will be a little um, thing which looks like a little microphone speaker just make sure that you click on that and that comes on yeah it's on now but it keeps going off okay it's staying all on right now. hello so it's Josie hello. and who Karen hello Karen how are you good thank you so you guys are over in uh, Victoria yeah Melbourne uh-huh. Okay. What's the question, issue, um, whatever? Um, leg pain. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I don't like using this stuff on physical issues as much as I like using it on emotional stuff. But as you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of emotion associated with all physical issues. Um, so since we've had two physical issues in oh, this Oh, I can one, give you something um, else. Oh, okay. Well, we can okay. do it on that, but we've got to start on your emotional reactions to that and, and so on. And then we can also look at what you think might be the emotional cause and you can apply this process to that as well. But um, yeah, take your pick. Okay, we'll do leg pain. Okay. My friend has so it as well, so we're both going to work on it. Oh, okay. Um, well, <laughs> once... Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you know you both have the same emotional issues related to leg pain, but let's see. <laughs> okay, so for me, I'll get pain in a knee. Then when I clear that, it goes to a hip, and then it just keeps going around and around. Okay, so this is something that Gary Cray calls chasing the pain, and yeah. um, and that's actually just keep on doing it. Keep on following it and and uh, the energy will move through the different areas and you'll be releasing disturbances in different parts. Um, so there's nothing wrong with the fact that it moves around. You probably just need to get enough into the system to, to do this. Now, again, I'm assuming you have a diagnosis. You know what you're dealing with. You know that there isn't a physical thing here that could just simply be resolved and if you know I highly recommend following those lines of checking to make sure that happens because um, I'm not a doctor um, I can help you though with the emotional side of this and um, 
your reaction to it. So when you think about your pain, what's the reaction that you have or what's the thought that comes up? That I'm never going to get rid of it. Okay. So when you say that, do you feel that when she speaks? She's got that, that that's quite strong. Um, so just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To I'm never going to get rid of it. To I'm never going to get rid of it. And just let that go for a second to land and see what happens. I can feel the energy moving in the lower part of my body and I feel something around my chest and heart, like a thickness. Yeah, yeah okay. So there was there's clearly a disturbance in the chest area as well associated with this because your breathing opened up a little bit, chest opened up a little bit, um, but there's more. So you said there's a thickness around your heart? And I, my thoughts went straight to the heart failure I had eight years ago. Okay. Wow. All right, so just say I release all my emotional attachments to this heart failure. Ooh, I release all my emotional attachments to this heart failure. And just notice whatever that does. Massive wave of energy and a bit of fear. Okay, yeah, so this is what, when you've had an incident like this, you have the fear that it's going to come again. So you have no, not no, just... No, that's the... not the fear. Oh, okay, the... what's the fear? What's interesting is that the heart failure brought about the best changes in my whole life as a result. Oh, okay, I found great. EFT, so my you life another heart around. failure to get another good result? Well, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> So I think there's a fear that if I let go of the heart failure, I let go of the amazing changes in my life, which is irrational. Okay. But. Yes, of course, but it doesn't matter because this is what emotions are. They attach to thoughts and then the, then the, the, it's, it's, it's not the thought, it's the emotion. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To if I um, release this heart failure... To if I release this heart failure. Or if I release my attachments to this heart failure. If I release my attachments to this heart failure. I'm going to lose all the gains. I'm going to lose all the gains. Okay, massive waves of energy coming through me and a real lump in my throat. Hmm, okay, so just say I restore the right energy to my throat. I restore the right energy to my throat. Or, you know, I restore the right energy flow to my throat. I restore the right energy flow to my throat. Yep, clearer. Hmm, okay. So, um, What's happening with your leg pain? Um, well, there's a bit of sciatica. Hmm. Um, I don't feel much else at the moment, but it does keep me awake at night. Okay. So I'm going to be curious if you just uh, apply this again to every reaction to you, you have to it. You know, when you're dealing with phys physical things, there's the reactions you have to it, it irritates you, it annoys you, it debilitates you, it stops you, it's painful. Um, and then there's the thoughts you have about it, you know, like this may never go away, this will get worse, I'm going to be crippled, whatever it is, um, and apply it to those things as well. And then to whatever you think may be the emotional cause, which, you know, may be caught up in that heart thing and may also be caught up with the belief that you need something really painful in order to have a good, you know, thing happen. <laughs> oh my God, it, did that hit the money? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just since we have that and we need to finish, but uh, but um, let's just, just try one more thing. Just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. So I need a, a lot of pain in order to make a positive change. I need a lot of pain in order to make a positive change.
Not a huge reaction, a little bit of energy mm. flowing through. Okay. Um, you can also do it on the opposite to that. Sometimes it works on the opposite because if you're attached to one side, you're attached to the other side, you know. So um, sometimes people are attached to not having any pain, you know. Everything has to be easy. I, I've had a fair bit of attachment to that in my life as well. And so you can find that that can, uh, you know, you can be attached to that other side. Um, but we're going to have to pause now because we've already gone over time. So thank you so much um, for coming on. And uh, I'm going to be curious if you just, like I said, just use it like buckshot on every thought and every reaction and every feeling that you have and just notice how it works for you and, um, and uh, let me know, yeah? Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. All right. Okay. And see you, Josie. See you, Steve. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> okay. So... Um, we have, oh man, an hour. That's why I started out rushing at the beginning because an hour is really not long. Um, you know, let me just remind you of the energy intention statements. Um, these are the, the two core ones that I've been using. Um, I release all my emotional attachment to this problem, event, image, belief, thought, whatever it is. Um, and the other one is in relationship to the body area, wherever the disturbance is, I restore the right energy flow to this area. Now, I believe when you're tapping that this is the consequence of, this is what the tapping does anyway. Um, thank you, I know some people have to go. Um, now, obviously, some people are gonna to wanna to go further with this and um, you know, in order for me to be able to keep running free webinars for those of you and giving out as much as I can for free, um, I need to have programs for those of you who want to do more and also want to offer an option for those of you who want to take this further. So um, I am doing that option and here is what it is. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate anyone who has the time to spend a few minutes because um, I want to offer you something, a way of doing this with me. Um, I'm doing these uh, group video conferencing processes, um, not on this webinar program, actually via video conference. And uh, what I've done is I've put together a program for those of you who want to do this with me. And I'm going to walk you through using the, the IEP as well as the set tapping. And of course, using my provocative energy techniques because I was infected with the provocative virus and I can't help but use that as well as part of the approach. Um, so my aim is to help you to release your emotional attachments that are stopping you and holding you back, restore your energy to flow, let you get to a place of clarity and where you can access your power to change and take action on your goals and basically get unstuck, get moving and make things happen. I really like to help people to, to do things that they've been wanting to do for a long time, whether that is read a, you know, write a book, not just read a book. Um, might be read a book if you have problems with that. Um, you know, get your stuff out there in the world, build your business, help people, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and the process here is using video conference. Now, this uh, images of, of one where people are doing a more formal kind of um, business meeting style, but this is how it looks. And uh, I, I offered this recently, and the time that I offered it was um, was Europe friendly, and this time I'm going to offer it a time which is US friendly. Um, obviously, all the times are hopefully friendly for uh, Australia and the, the countries that are kind of in line with us. Um, but uh, yeah, what happens is I've been running these two groups. I offered um, I offered them and they were taken up like within a couple of hours and filled. And what I want to do now is offer this one at a time which is um, kind of more, you know, US friendly, we know, kind of alternate. In the morning here is um, the day before, the afternoon or evening before in the US and Canada and, um, you know, so this will be nine o'clock Perth, Western Australia time on these dates. It's kind of for setting yourself up for the new year. Um, so there are five dates in December. This is because it only fits in after I come back from my trip to Europe uh, in November. And so I've got uh, five dates in December. They're all on Tuesdays and then one in January. And the aim of that one is kind of like, you know, following up on what we've done and reinforcing what we've done. So it you know, like also allows, because people tend to go away on holidays here in Australia in early January, for those who do have holidays, allows them to get back. Uh, those session times, here's what they translate to. So it's going to be 5 p.m. 
on Monday in uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Vancouver, 7 p.m. in Chicago on Monday, 8 p.m. in New York and Toronto. Unfortunately, not as good for our friends in London, Brussels, Paris, Rome and Europe and so on. Um, middle of the morning. I always have a few people who like to get up in the middle of the night and join us though, so you're welcome to. It'll be 9 a.m. Tuesday in Perth, Singapore, Shanghai, 11 in Brisbane, 11.30 Adelaide, Darwin, 12 in Sydney, Melbourne, 2 p.m. in Auckland. And uh, if you um, do follow up and look at the program, I will send out a link uh, to the you know, or there will be a link on the page so you can check what the time is in your location. Here's what it is. Um, basically, there is going to be nine hours of coaching. Uh, the rate for that is charged at three ninety five Australian dollars. Um, if you're buying internationally, you end up paying three fifty nine oh nine because you don't have to pay our taxes, and that translates to two hundred and sixty four US dollars approximately based on the exchange rate yesterday when I did this. Um, and that's basically the same rate that I charge for a one-to-one -one session with me. So you get nine hours of coaching in a group. It's a group of 12 and it's first come, first serve. So the people on this webinar are getting this. That will then, um, once I send out the recording, it will go out to the other people who, who signed up. And then if there are any places available, I'll offer it to people on the newsletter list. But only people who've been here and been through this um, will have um, first go uh, at being first come, first serve for this. Here's where it is. Um, it's at eftdownunder.com forward slash make dash it dash happen dash coaching forward slash. When you click off from the webinar, you should be taken to that automatically. But obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube later, um, then you need to um, copy down this link. Here's the short link for it, eftdownunder.com forward slash question mark P equals 4072. And um, if you just want to express uh, if, um, what, what's going to actually happen if you go to that web page and you want to be in the group, you have to um, fill out a form or send us an email to admin at eftnanunder.com saying you want to be in the group. And we will allocate um, people places and send them links for payment in order of receipt. Last time I did this, um, the first group was filled in less than an hour and a half of when I sent it out. So um, I expect that this will be oversubscribed. And so if you're interested in now in it now, send us an email to that address and um, I will have the wonderful experience of being able to not just um, not just talk about this stuff with you, but actually use it with you and you'll be able to join a supportive group of people. Um, just like I'm working with a with couple of groups that I have now and we have people in those groups from um, from all over the world and uh, it's really lovely to get together with people and to, to see them change and to help them to use this process, which continues to astound me at how much it can do, because it shouldn't work so easily and it shouldn't work so profoundly based on, um, based on what it is. So thank you so much for being part of this. I really um, appreciate your joining me. I hope that you go away and use the technique and apply it. I know if you do, some of you are going to be like I have been, continually astounded by the possibilities of what it can do for you. Um, obviously, I'd love to be able to take you further with that. And for those of you who, uh, who have the resources and have the time and can make those times to come into the coaching program, I look forward to working with you. Um, for everyone else, I'm going to keep, um, you know, I, I use that to fund this so that I can put out free stuff to help as many people as we can. And please um, use it, pass it on, send us your feedback um, to admin at eftdownunder.com. Love to hear from you and get your feedback on this webinar and the techniques and how you use them. So, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you found what I shared helpful. I hope you go away and use it. And uh, thanks, yes, to my volunteers, um, uh, Sylvia and um, and Josie and Karen, who were my volunteers. And um, yeah, keep in touch. All right, take care.